Well, good morning. We're glad that you joined us uh, today right here at Quaybog Church. Uh, in light of all that's been happening around us this weekend, uh, you know we're not meeting for church, and so here Kyle and I are again, again, <laughs> doing, doing this again. Uh, and this morning, in light of all that is happening, uh, and what I want Kyle to speak specifically to today, uh, I'd just like to have you thinking with us about the will of God, God's will. Uh, and I, I know for you, and I hope you know for us, that God's plan, God's purpose, God's will is our priority. It's our priority at Quaybog Church. It's my priority for my life and my relationships, uh, my marriage, me being pastor. It's, uh, it's our priority. It's Kyle's priority. I know it is Kyle's priority for his life, for his marriage, for his ministry, for everything. And so uh, I was talking earlier with Kyle. Do you have, Kyle, uh, do you have a, uh, a specific uh, scripture or specific scriptures? Because I do. When I think will of God, uh, my go-to, maybe yours too might be, my go-to is Matthew chapter 6, uh, starting with verse 25 and, and that thought of Jesus teaching it right here in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount uh, is uh, about life. And so in verse 25, he starts right off. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is, is not life more important than food and your body more important than clothes? And then if you just skim down through this, this section, uh, the pagans run after all of these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. And then here's our verse, verse 33. But seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you as well. And that's what I, mm -hmm. I go to in my own life, in my heart, is seek what God says first. And then things, even important things, will come after that. They, they rate lower on God's priority chain, God's priority list. And, and then there's another passage for me, and it's in 1 John chapter 5. Uh, after uh, John writing to believers about knowing their relationship with God is secure, verses 11 and 12. And then he talks about God's will and how you can know God's will. This is the confidence we have in him, that if we are seeking what is the will of God, then we can know he will answer us. Mm -hmm. He will give it to us if it is God's will. And often people will say, well, uh, Lord, if it's your will, Lord, if it's your will. And I don't mean for us to punt always to saying that, but for us to know that if it is not God's will, if God has revealed that it isn't his will, then I don't want to ask for it. But on the contrary, if we are pursuing what we believe honors God and we're not sure yet or we're not sure of details yet, we will keep running hard in that direction until God shows us different. And so for me, those two passages to start with, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, and, and then 1 John chapter 5, verses uh, 11 through 15 mm -hmm. for me are huge. Now, Kyle, for you, uh, your one or two Go to places on the will of God. Uh, I think uh, understanding. Uh, well, I mean, we're in Romans right now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were to break down Romans, something we'll talk about when we get back together next week is to look at Romans uh, in kind of three sections. I think it can be helpful. One through eight chapters. One through eight. What do we believe? Mm -hmm. You know, what is our core doctrine? Right? It's like Christianity one hundred and one. Mm -hmm. And then nine through eleven. All right, go, well, what about Jewish people? Mm -hmm. and what about God's people? What, what happens to them and, and all this stuff? And then 12 through 16, I've always looked at it. It's like, okay, so here's all this information. Now what? Right? What do you exactly. do with that? How do you and, apply that? Right, how do you apply that? Yeah. And so I see uh, Romans 12, 1, uh, Paul kind of kicking this idea right off. He says, uh, if, for us, in light of God's mercies, that I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters. So Romans 12, 1 and 2 are a, kind of a big 
you know, getting God's understanding, getting God's wisdom, understanding his will for my life. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in light of God's mercy, so in response to God's goodness, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, because this is your spiritual act of worship. Mm. And I love that because there's a, to me, there's a connection there. Hey, look how good God is to us, right? Yeah. Because of that, what is our response? Paul says, will be all in, you know, the a living sacrifice can sound kind of weird. Like, what does that mean? To me, it's when you're a living sacrifice, if you're going to be sacrificed, you are, that's an all in kind of deal. And I, right. I mean, I, and so I feel like that is just God saying, look, and or Paul saying in, in light of how good God is to us, why would you not be all in? Why would you not give yourself wholly and completely to him? Mm. But that's not where it ends. He says, because of that, he said, there's this equation that we want to keep uh, in mind, this conform, um, and transform. So he says, so don't be conformed to the pattern of this world or to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, why would we want to do that? And well, Paul says, because then it's going to be at that point that you know what is God's will, because doing the spiritual act of worship of offering yourself as a sacrifice then leads to all this space in your heart and in your mind, I feel to really be able to be listening to God without distractions. Mm -hmm. And he says, and then after that point, he says through testing. So when you are not being conformed to the world, but you're being transformed in your mind, then through testing, it says, you will know what the will of God is, which is good and it's pleasing and it's perfect. perfect right? doesn't always feel good and pleasing and perfect, right? It doesn't always wish. I know, right? It doesn't always make us happy, but I think though that that's a big one for me. And then James uh, 1, 5 through 8 is another one. And I love the simplicity of the, I guess the equation of going to God and needing wisdom and God giving it to you. And in the NLT, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But then James, he starts drawing some hard lines like James often does in the book of James. He says, but if you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, he says, because if you do, you are divided in your loyalty and you are as unsettled as a wave that's blown and tossed around by the sea. And he says, such people shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. And it's like, that, that shakes you. Doesn't yeah, it, it does. Really? Such people are like, yeah. you know, so if my faith is not completely and holy, in God, when I ask for wisdom, he says, I shouldn't expect to receive anything from the mm -hmm. Lord because I, my loyalty, again, is divided between God and the world. And people like that, James says, are unstable in everything that they do. And that gives me, it's, it's like a hopeful verse, but it's also a very sobering verse, sure. right? Because God wants us to understand his will. God wants to give us his wisdom. But at the same time, he says, but don't offer up these cheap prayers, you know, like, oh God, I'm, I'm you know, a panic prayer or just, right. I'm going to throw a, a quick prayer up to the man upstairs. Like he's saying, is that all I am? I'm like mm. a, the man upstairs on my vending machine. Right. Or are you taking time to really say, no, I want to be transformed in my mind and I want to be all in and I want to trust wholly in this, whatever this decision is, is being able to understand the will of God. And my old pastor, Mark from Boone, who yes, you met, yes. he said, and I, I think I told you this before, but right before we moved up here, so talking transition and all this stuff, right before we moved up here, I was really nervous. I said, I don't know how to, I don't know how to understand what God wants me to do. I could literally move anywhere uh, to be a pastor when we finally felt that, yes, this is the call in our lives. But then it was like, well, where, right? Mm -hmm. And pastor Mark said, well, Kyle, he said, do you believe that God wants you to know his will? And I said, I sure hope so. <laughs> he said, well, yeah. He said, of course he does. If he wants you to live in his will, obviously he wants you to know it, right? And I was like, yeah. And he said, because it's impossible to live in his will if you don't know it. And I said, okay. And he said, so God is not some car dealer doing three card Monty on the sidewalk in New York City. That's like, oh, which card is it? Which card is it? And he said, that's not how God operates. He said, God is a loving God who wants you to know and understand and follow his will. And he said, so if you're seeking it, God will show you his will. And so that along with those passages for me is, uh, was really helpful to think, yeah, God does want me. And then I see James one, mm -hmm. he does want me to know as well, yes. but I can't be divided in that approach though either. Yeah. When you are, th there's a thought that, uh, since, uh, reading a book back in the 1980s, uh, there was a thought given by a guy named Gary Friesen, uh, book is decision making and the will of God. Uh, and the premise that Gary Friesen places in his book is 
kind of where you're going, Kyle, uh, is if you are living in what you know to be the will of God right now, you are spending time with him, you are, you're tender towards the things that he's prompting in your life right now, make a decision and it will be the will of God because God will show you as you take those steps. Uh, I'd like to share a story from scripture uh, that uh, speaks to me. In fact, uh, when we are going to be fasting, and Kyle will have more to say about that in just a little bit, uh, it's one of the scriptures and one of the stories that I'll be asking you to read because for me, it is so helpful when I think about trusting God and, and following his plan. And it has to do with uh, King Jehoshaphat, and it's in Second Chronicles chapter 20. King Jehoshaphat was a good king for the most part, for the most part. Uh, but he had a weakness, and his weakness had to do with the friends that he chose. And so he was on best buddy relationship with two evil kings of the north, King Ahab and then King Ahab's son. And he would get uh, kind of twisted up in their plans and uh, was judged by God because of it. But uh, in Second Chronicles 19, it is really neat to see how King Jehoshaphat, who had a heart for God, was wanting all of Judah to listen to God, to listen to God's word. And, and so he was appointing Levites to, to uh, teach and pray and show the people how to follow God. Uh, when you get to chapter 20, right out of, uh, kind of, out of nowhere, uh, this alliance against Judah uh, hit uh, King Jehoshaphat and scared him. And so these three and possibly four kings uh, united to come against Jehoshaphat and it, it, it scared him. Uh, it's the rest of the story that I want for us to be able to read later, but for you even to read now. Uh, it's what King Jehoshaphat did. He called uh, all of Israel to come together, and, uh, excuse me, all of Judah, separate from the northern kingdom of Israel, but all of Judah to come together and to pray and seek God. And then he prayed. And uh, his prayer uh, was so humble and so honest. And he would say to God, Lord Yahweh, uh, we don't know what to do about this massive army that has come up against us. And I feel like I'm a little child in, in how even to do this. I don't know. But it's what he said. We have no might. We have no power. We do not know what to do. And so our, verse 12, our eyes are on you. And honestly, when I look back over the last year and a half, almost two years now, uh, since we started down this road here at Quaybog of Terry and me wondering from God, is this time to retire? And then the next part of that, well, what does that do to Kyle and Brittany? Uh, what does that throw into their lap? What should we do? And honestly, uh, I was saying out loud to God, Lord, this is bigger than I know. We've never been down this part of the road before. Right. And early, uh, I was saying to Kyle, I think you're the guy. I think you're the one that's going to take uh, the reins from here after I'm done. And Kyle, I remember the first time <laughs> what he said to me, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I want to... I want to know that too. And I'm thinking, no, I'm telling you, that's, this is the will of <laughs> God for you, Kyle. God. And, uh, and of Kyle, kind of the deer in the headlights thinking, I'm sure uh, uh, I need some time to process. And so... And it, Brittany saying she needed time to process. Time to process. And so then slowing it down and, and saying, is, is this the will of God for you and Britt? Uh, and... For us to be revisiting this passage for me, Lord, it's bigger than we know. And, and we do not want to just push into something that you're going to be slowing us down and maybe even stopping us in. And so we took two, uh, looking back, it seems like it happened really, really fast, but two years of earnestly with, our, uh, with you, our people, and with our leaders, and with each other, 
Kyle and Brittany searching and then Kyle coming back to me and saying a year later, I'm all in on this and uh, how blessed I, I felt because I love Kyle. We love Kyle and Brittany and, and we know you do. And I, I trust Kyle. I, I trust uh, Kyle Sargent to lead us. Uh, but our eyes are not on Kyle and Brittany. Our eyes are, are on our Heavenly Father. Lord, continue to show us your plan, your way, because this is bigger than we ever thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your passage, Kyle, uh, of just, wouldn't it be nice if God was clear always? You know, you could always just see stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, when you were talking, it made me think of another story of uh, you know, the, the importance of when you're going through transition, when you're going through these things to have wise counsel. Mm. And I just, I think of Rehoboam, you know, here's Solomon, mm. wisest guy ever. Mm. Uh, and it's like, man, I wish Rehoboam would have just read some of the stuff that his dad was writing That's and, right. or listened to it maybe. And he had such an opportunity to listen to the wise counsel. And isn't it interesting that there's no record in scripture that he went to his dad and say, what would you give me for advice? Right. I know that is interesting. Mm. That that would have been a an interesting one to read uh, yeah. and see what they yeah. said because yeah. he, of course, if you don't know the story, when the then the succession is about to happen from Solomon to his son, he has two options. He says, "Okay, I can either talk to these older, wiser counselors that have all this year, you know, all these years of experience, and uh, of also not just uh, like wisdom, but these guys are advising." Solomon, who is insanely wise. Imagine. And so what was the wisdom of these guys like? And so he has the option to go and listen to them and say, hey, what should I do with these complaints coming from the people that, mm -hmm. you know, my dad was too hard, the taxes are too high, all that kind of stuff. What should we do? And he has the old guys and he has the young guys who are his buddies who have zero experience more than he himself does. And to remember, these are not uh, 19, 20 year old guys. These guys are guys in their early 40s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so wow. he rejects the wisdom, though, of, uh, of the wiser, older counselors and goes with the harsher <laughs> advice of the younger guys and says, you know, no, if you think that was rough, you just wait, boys, because I've got something in store for you. Yeah. And of course, the nation splits. And, and so at, during, and the reason I say that is through this process, that's what we are doing. We are bringing a lot of people mm. into this process with us to help us think through this and pray through this and, uh, and really approach this in a wise way. And then mm. as our candidates go through the interview process, as they go deeper, it'll involve more people, not just myself, not just Dean, but it'll be involved with more leaders and even students here at our church because mm -hmm. we do want to seek the counsel of God's people, right? Now, I wish it was clear to answer your question. I wish it was as clear as it was back in uh, the Old Testament. So you have, as they're walking through uh, and they're, they're just setting, uh, like they're basically like, okay, God's, I've got you out of Egypt. I've got you across the desert and not even at that point, really. It's like they've got the river rather and they're coming out and God's like, all right, this is how you're going to know my specific will. This is how you're going to know how to follow me. And in Numbers 9, 15, right? Somewhere in there? Uh, uh, 19. 19. He is going to tell them, all right, look, once the tabernacle is built, there's going to be a cloud, it says, that is right over top of the tabernacle during the day. So you're going to see this pillar and you're going to know, all right, am I leaving today or am I staying put? If the cloud stays put, you stay put. Stay in your tent. If the cloud leaves, you follow it, right? Mm -hmm. And then at night, it's going to be a pillar of fire. And if that is the case, then you can see it at night. And so I, that, that is really a story that there is such clarity from God to That's say, right. okay, I know exactly where I'm going to go and when I'm going to go. And unfortunately, I don't feel, I don't think we get this, no. that necessarily no. all the time. Th there but have been no pillars of fire over Quaybog Church at nighttime, have there? No, I don't think so. In the day either. <laughs> if there's a cloud of smoke over it, somebody call uh, there, the police. There are clouds coming, but right. it's not what we're thinking. Right. But now I'm, I am curious though, what... Uh, have you ever had a time like that in your life where you were just, man, this is like pillar of fire. I know exactly what to do, mm -hmm. where to go. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever had like that kind of clarity? Just no questions asked. Like, man, this is it. No, <laughs> it's never been that way for me in my own experience. It's been more like stepping out and wondering, wondering, is this the right direction? And, and then only looking back later and realizing, number one, w at the time we knew that we were listening for God, trusting him, giving it to him, talking with him, uh, and then taking those steps. 
but it would be later it's looking back and going wow lord thank you for the way that you uh you made that known and you you have certainly placed blessing uh, and i'm thinking how did you know when you moved up here did you know in advance like how clear were you when you moved here i think pretty clear i mean it was maybe not like Pillar of fire kind of thing. But so there was not a pillar of fire <laughs> leading the way leading north the way to, to, to Massachusetts. To Massachusetts. Yeah, like <laughs> came up through Harrisburg and we knew it stopped there at night for us. Uh, no, but yeah. we were pretty, that was one of the times in our lives where we were pretty certain getting out of the Marines and moving uh, to Boone. So when I got discharged from the Marine Corps, we moved to Boone and we took a week to visit there mm -hmm. and, and you know, just see the area, pray about it, think about it. And there were so many things that fell in line that week. We just, mm -hmm. we felt that was a time of just absolute certainty of following God and saying, this is, this is where we're supposed to move. Mm -hmm. And then when we transitioned up here, it was very similar, uh, just cool. to really, yeah, cool. we, so much so that, you know, our house was still on the market That's right. when we moved up here. We mm -hmm. didn't we have our house sold yet. And so, right. again, coming up here, there were a lot of things that fell in place. And we just said, okay, yeah, this this is the move. This is the mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I'm glad that we are always glad when it works that with that clarity. Right. Yeah. But out of the other millions of times, the other choices I've had to make, I've not always had that clarity Boy, for I, certain. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, one of the factors uh, that Kyle and I and our leaders and, and you too know is that whenever you are thinking, processing, s searching for uh, what God's best is, what God's will is, the role that prayer plays in that. And uh, I know that when we were uh, emailing and, and uh I talking on the emails. phone, wow, wow, <laughs> uh, of the, how much prayer, uh, because we felt even here at Quaybog, uh, right from the time I had mentioned it in 2010 uh, at our annual meeting, uh, which would have been in early June, uh, of saying that I, would, I was going to begin to pursue uh, uh, specifically uh, someone to become our youth pastor, our uh, pastor of student ministries and uh, and the praying uh, that that started then on our end Kyle yeah. and then after being in touch with you and you were already you and Brittany already seeking what God would have for you mm -hmm. uh, in Boone and the part that prayer plays and so to say as we think of our future as a church at Quaybog and in particular Catalyst Ministry, Youth Ministry, mm -hmm. Children's Ministry, our Kids Zone uh, little guys. And it is uh, prayer is the centerpiece, prayer and scripture, those two pieces that would come together and show us, Lord, will you show us your way? Because that is what I mean when I say to God, Lord, our eyes are on you. I'm, I'm searching scripture. I know that Kyle and Brittany searching scripture uh, to find, Lord, what is, what is your best? How do you want us to follow? If there's not gonna be the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by nighttime, how are you going to show us your way? Mm -hmm. And it is by seeking him on our knees, in prayer uh, and praying a lot. And then what is he saying to us in his word? How uh, is he talking to us through his word? And so I'd just like to pause right now uh, and ask you to pray out loud uh, with me, me praying out loud and you praying with me. Lord, uh, I bring this again to you. Uh, and as our church family gathers around us, as I pray right now, I bring this to you and say thank you that you have led us to this point. You have brought us here. Uh, and uh, an old song from uh, decades ago, you didn't bring us this far just to leave us. And I know that you will continue to go ahead of us and show us your plan, show us your person, show us you through all of this. And Jesus, I say with your people at Quaybog Church right now, will you continue to go ahead of us? And if we are starting down a path that you want to stop us, not only do I give you permission because you don't need permission, I ask you, close doors, 
close opportunities, close down whatever is not from you. And I'm sitting here with Kyle uh, today saying, you've done that already. <clears throat> Thank you. We don't know down the road. We only know here and now. Will you show us your plan, your man, your family, whoever you will bring uh, to serve alongside of Kyle and, and Britt mm -hmm. right here at Quaybog Church? Thank you. Thank you that we can trust you. We will trust you through this. Amen. Amen. So as far as the, the fasting goes then, uh, we are going to be doing it next weekend. So we'll be doing it the first weekend in February because we talked and we didn't really want to do it uh, apart. Dean felt it'd be best, mm. you know, to be able to not do it as we're all just at home, but to do that fast and do that prayer together mm. on a Sunday. And, and it'll even be communion Sunday. And so there'll be uh, a good bit of celebration. I guess we can fast, but still do communion. We will do that. Right. So that's legal, right? Do I need to pray about this? <laughs> we got a conflict yes, here. Yes, we will ask God <laughs> if we have his permission. And I, I think he will give I it I think to he us. would probably honor that, <laughs> yes. Uh, but so we're going to be doing it in light of where we are and how the, the process is, has gone. Because so far, to, to give you an update, where we are is Dean and I have been able to sit down and talk with both candidates right now, the Cooper from Texas. And we got to Zoom with him on Tuesday morning and talked with him for a couple of hours. Mm. It was good. We... Uh, as I mentioned last Sunday, we worked on doctrine, we worked on ministry mindset stuff, his mm. experience, uh, you know, where is he with scripture, all those kinds of things, just to see if there's any really big red flags that needed to be addressed. Uh, and there weren't, and that was good. And uh, then Tim, we got to meet with the very next day on That's Wednesday. Right. That's right. Tim's right down the road in Southbridge. Mm. And uh, that was really good. Uh, we met with him for a couple hours. Same thing, just mm -hmm. talked ministry mindset, uh, worked on his, uh, his story a little bit about his his experiences, things like that, worked on, worked through some doctrine and things like that. And, and it was also good a good conversation. It was a really good conversation. Yeah. And we got to do that one here, of course, mm. on site, which was nice mm. uh, because of course he's right down the road. So we were able to do mm. that one here. Mm. Um, but so we are currently praying through those two names right now. And that's specifically what we would ask you to give us um, your prayer for. Like we really would desire as a leadership team that mm -hmm. will be clear on that, like who to move forward with, how to move forward, how to proceed. And so uh, just in, in the meantime, even though we're not going to be doing the fast today, just continue to pray, take time right as soon as we're done today, just uh, as a family, individually, just to, to pray God's will would be done in our church, because that's a really big deal for us that our people are praying because we have seen the work that that does uh it's sure. it's a hard thing really to sometimes talk about like people will ask well how does prayer work and mm -hmm. does prayer work and mm -hmm. you know can i change the will of god can i change my circumstances can i change that and sometimes it's not easy to give black and white answers to that right. All, all right. i know is that jesus himself says pray right. uh, and pray in his name right. and uh, scripture is just full of people praying to God, asking God for help, needing help, and God showing up and doing something. That's right. So those are the promises that I have from Scripture. Is, uh, isn't it interesting that after in, in Ephesians chapter 6, after that section of Scripture on the armor of God, uh, it finishes up by saying, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions mm -hmm. with all kinds of prayers and requests. Yeah. And with this in mind, keep on praying. And I, I love how, mm -hmm. how that reminder is, don't stop. Be persistent. Be persistent. I mean, Jesus told a parable to that effect, right? I mean, the persistent widow. It's That's like, right. don't give up. And, uh, right. and I think that as we do that, God's going to be faithful to that. And then even to circle back around to where we started, you know, in First John 5, 15, this is the, or 5, 14, this is the confidence that we have toward him. If we ask anything in his name, he hears us. That's right. I love that. Yeah. You know, if we ask anything and it's according to his will, rather. I think I said that wrong. If we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. I just, I love that. So Quaybog Church, he'll hear us. He'll hear us. And he'll answer and us. And he is listening. So uh, Kyle, would you pray uh, right now with our family, our Quaybog family, pray by name, uh, by name for both of these men. And I think we talked to Cooper first mm -hmm. and, and then we talked to Tim. Just yep. pray. Yep. So Lord, I, I give you the, the process there give you our church, I give you the, mm. the reach that we get to have in this community here uh, with the gospel. Yeah. And uh, I pray for Cooper 
I pray right now, God, even as we meet, that uh, he's going to have a sense of what you are doing and where you would have him to go. In his life. In his life. Sure. Lord, mm -hmm. Because we care about this young man. We sure um, do. It's not just about coming here. It's about mm -hmm. this is a guy that belongs to you and is trying to find your will for his life. That's and right. so I pray you're going to speak also. You're going to give him good counsel in his life Please. that those that love him and are there with him and mm. helping him through this process mm. are also going to have a sense of what's happening, where he's going. And, and for Tim, the same thing. Lord, I pray that the people in his life are going to hear your voice, that uh, his wife is going to hear your voice, Lord, that uh, Alicia is going to know what you're doing in their lives mm. because Alicia is very much a part of this as well. Always, always. And uh, I pray for uh, just a, a sense of peace, uh, a sense of excitement, Lord, that you're doing something in their lives and that you are leading them and guiding them. You will show them your will and um, just like our other candidates that we prayed for and prayed mm. with, mm. Lord, that if this is it, you would confirm it in their hearts. And if it's not, that you would shut the door in their hearts, Lord. And that the same thing for us in uh, leadership here at Quaybog, that you would open our hearts to what exactly you're doing and shut our hearts to what That's you're not right. doing. That's right. And we give that to you, Jesus Christ. Mm. Just like John says, uh, asking according to your will, just yeah. like you said, Jesus, in your name, mm. uh, knowing that you hear us, Jesus Christ. And I do pray that in your name, Jesus. Mm. And his church said, amen. Amen. And Psalm 5, uh, with uh, the writer of that psalm, David, writing that psalm. In the morning, O oh Lord, you hear my voice. You hear our voices. In the morning, we lay our requests before you and we wait in expectation. We wait in expectation. Yeah. Uh, you are not a God who takes pleasure in evil and with you the, those who are wicked cannot dwell. God loves his people, his saints, his mm -hmm. followers. Uh, we are so glad that you joined us today. We are so glad that you took time to, to be here with Kyle and me. Yeah. And uh, again, I say for all of us, uh, our, our God is the Lord of everything, including snow, including snow. Including snow. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for giving us time together this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. You got it. <laughs>